Hey there, Rock and Roll Junkies. Charlie here with another Grey Wolf review. This week, Guns N' Roses with their classic debut album, Appetite for Destruction. Now, this is a very special one for me because it is the 30th anniversary of this album, Appetite for Destruction. And this album just happens to be not only my favorite Guns N' Roses album, but my favorite album of all time. Like of every single album, this one is my number one. I think this is the greatest thing ever put on vinyl. This is just fantastic. And I love it, so I'm celebrating 30 years with this album. This album, as you know, came out July 21st, 1987, and it is the highest selling debut album of any band of all time. So, you know, a lot of people think this is the greatest thing ever made, and I'm one of those people. I worship Guns N' Roses, they're my favorite band. I saw them on the Night of, Not In This Lifetime tour, and I love them, and I love everything about them. So I'm here to celebrate 30 years of my favorite album, Appetite For Destruction. So let's start with the first track, which is the classic Welcome to the Jungle. Now this has a classic, just classic guitar intro. Uh, notice Izzy's like uh, crescendo melody in the intro, because he's doing it. He's playing the intro slash and Izzy are playing the intro there. I love in the intro when Axel goes, oh my god, and then it goes into the song. I just love that. Um, the rest of the band then just comes in with these just classic riffs and drums. I love the groove of, of Duff's bass on this song. And Axel just sounds real great, real dirty, real raw on this one. The great drums from Steven are fantastic. I love when the song just slows down, you know, the part where he's like, When you're high, you never ever want to go down. So down! And he screams. I love that. I love Axel's scream. Um, Great, great, great solo. Very Aerosmith-esque, that solo from Slash. Amazing, I love it. And then the bass near the end is just absolutely amazing. I love it. I think this is the perfect hard rock song by one of the greatest hard rock bands ever. Um, Slash said that they, they wrote this, this song in like three hours, which is crazy to think about it. It's just an amazing song, I love it. Welcome to the jungle. Let's move into track number two, which is It's So Easy. Uh, it hooks you right from that bass intro. Amazing bass intro by Duff, of course. And then you hear like Axel, but he's not screaming in this one. He doesn't have a high voice either. He has like a deep voice in this one, which is basically his normal talking voice, which I thought was really cool the first time I heard this. Uh, I love you know, when it slows down the song and actually just saying it's so easy. I love that part and I love the solo from Slash. A great solo. Um, I love the lyrics on this. They're really cool. Uh, talking about how everything at this point in time, for the band, was just everything was so easy. Everything just came to them so easily. Uh, I love Axel's vocal change to the end where then he starts like screaming. He goes from the deep to like the screams. It sounds so cool. I just love that, just a real dirty street sounding song. Uh, and, uh, you know, this song had a music video filmed for it. And, cool little story here David Bowie showed up to the set of the music video and he started like talking and flirting to Axel's girlfriend, Erin. And Axel noticed that and, well, he went over there and punched him and then kicked him out of the set. He kicked out David Bowie after punching him. David Bowie, however, uh, apologized. He apologized to Axel, and then they went out to drink and party at the China Club. Only in America. <laughs> but the music video for this, I don't think it was released. I don't think uh, MTV wanted to release it, but it was filmed, and it is online. So that's cool. Because all the singles except one had a music video filmed for it. Let's go on to number three, which is Night Train. Now this song, it is about a brand of very cheap wine called Night Train Express. And if you watch the Ritz, the Guns N' Roses Live with the Ritz, 
uh, I think Slash says, this song is about a walk in the park. Which, what he means was that they were walking in a park once, and they were drinking, of course, Night Train, and they were all going like, we're on the Night Train, while they were drinking. So that's where that story came from. So it kind of is about a walk in the park, but not exactly. It's about cheap wine. Uh, <laughs> I just, I just love that melodic uh, intro. Just wonderful melodic intro. That's from Izzy. It's just, it's so good. It's easily one of the greatest songs ever by this band. Or just any band. I just love the use of cowbell by Steven, and the drums and the bass just sound so good. The lyrics, if you think about it, they make no sense at all. But they're really cool. Maybe it's from point of view being like a night train night train because you're like it's really cheap wine I heard it was like two dollar wine uh, probably because you're like really drunk when you're on it that this is supposed to be like you're on night train you're just rambling on because that's why the lyrics make no sense but I think it's a great song I love I love Axel's like uh, voice it's really raspy on this one but not exactly that high you know until like very like, the chorus parts and I don't love that the solo isn't flashy, right? But it's like real raw. And the first half of the first solo is Izzy, which is really cool, because there's two solos here. There's another one in the outro, which I hate when bands do that, when they have like a solo in the outro. You really want to hear it, but it just fades away. I hate that. But I love Axel's like high voice when he's like, loaded like a freight train, flying like an aeroplane. The song just sounds just so dangerous, so it's raw and dangerous. As I said, the, the solo near the bridge and near the outro are fantastic. The outro solo, I, I wish I could hear it more, as I said. Um, now this song was a single, but out of the five singles, this is the only one that a music video was not filmed for, which I thought was odd. And I feel like this one would have made a pretty good video, more than, say, It's So Easy. Which, you know, it's kind of unfortunate, but Slash says that this is his favorite song to play live. And this is one of my favorite songs to hear live. So, no wonder, because it sounds so good. I love this song. So, let's move on to the next one, which is number four, Out To Get Me. I love that intro with the pounding drums and bass, and then the guitars, you know, come in and it just sounds so cool. And then Axel's voice sounds real dirty. I love it. And then I love the, the riffs just throughout, you know, the lyrics here by Izzy and Axel are great. I love when Axel goes, let me see you try. I love that part. And the great drums throughout by Steven. Throughout this whole song, great. And I love the ending where Axel goes, take that one to heart. I just love it. Uh, great song, amazing live, love it. Let's move on to number five, which is Mr. Brown Stone. Now this is an Izzy riff, and the intro cannot be more perfect. It's just great, fantastic. Um, you know, the use of wah wah pedal gives it this nice like crunch to the song. It has a great groove. The bass is phenomenal here by Mr. Duff McKagan, and the drums and the guitars. Everything is just on fire here. Axel's vocal melody is great. Uh, I love the solo here. Fantastic solo. Steven is on fire throughout this song. The lyrics are really cool. They're about heroin, of course, but I really like them. Uh, I love the ending. You know, Axel just sounds great. He goes, Yowza! I love that. Love that. Love it, love it, love it. Let's move on to number six, which is the probably most famous song on this album, the fan favorite. This is Paradise City. Or Zero, the hero, watch my Black Sabbath for you. Anyways, um, Born Again. Anyways, it is a classic song. This is Slash's favorite song that they ever made. Not his favorite to play, but his favorite that they ever made. Probably made to listen to, but this is Slash's favorite. Uh, I love the intro, the melodic riffs and the loud drums uh, sound fantastic. And then Axel comes in with that grace, that great voice, you know. Axel, you can actually hear him doing backup vocals on this one with his like normal like deep voice. Yeah, I think it's, it's pretty cool. I love that part with the whistle. You go, and then you know the song gets heavier, and then you start to hear the, that slash riff, which is really just zero the hero. It's, it's the same thing. Listen to both songs. It's the same thing. And they've admitted 
that they took it from Black Sabbath. So let's just move on. Let's move on. Watch my review. Anyways, uh, it's a great anthemic chorus. It's really fun to sing along to live. Of course, this song always closes off their sets, their shows. Uh, the lyrics here make no sense <laughs> again, uh, but they're just so cool, you know. They really make no sense. Just sing along to them. They make zero sense. Maybe they kind of do in a vague sort of way, but I never really, you know, Captain America's reference in there. Captain America's been torn apart now. He's a court with a broken heart. Turn me around, take me back to the start. I must be losing my mind. Are you blind? Nothing I just said makes any sense, but it just sounds so cool. And it's all, you know, things are going together. I love, you know, uh, when the lyrics, when the song just speeds up. I just love that part. And then the band goes, goes crazy, the bass, drums, everything. The bass especially in this part sounds so good. And then I love that wild, just chaotic solo by Slash. Um, and this is really the only song on this album to feature synthesizers in the, uh, the intro, the first 20 seconds, which is like, we're in the 80s. This came out in the 80s where synths were used basically everywhere. So for this album to only use it once, that's kind of like unique in the 80s at least for you know this album to be drenched in synthesizers i think it's pretty cool i think it worked in this song the first 20 seconds i think it's pretty cool but yeah this is a great song fantastic song move on to number seven which is my michelle very dark intro i just love it so slow and then it just gets real heavy real heavy real quick it just sounds Real raw and dirty, just a you know mean song. Axel sounds just like real demonic here. He has you know he's just so rocky. It's not like the whole song how he delivers everything. I love the bass sound on this by Duff. Uh, just the bass. I'm gonna say that on the whole album sounds fantastic. Duff is just on point on this whole album. Just great. Now Slash used. On this album, he used a Les Paul guitar on every single song except this one. On this one, he used a Gibson SG, I believe, because he said it would give the, the song a darker sound. Which I thought was a, a cool little fact there. And, you know, this is a dark song. And if, you know, if he thought that would work, it worked because the song is real dark, real dirty sounding. I just, I just love it. It's a great song by Michelle. Wish they would play this live more. When they played it on the Not In This Lifetime tour, a few times with Steven, it sounded fantastic. But let's move on to number eight, Think About You. Now this is an Izzy written song with Izzy on lead. And the intro again is Izzy. It's very like upbeat, little fun intro. Uh, this is an extreme, extreme, extremely underrated song. It's been played so, like very, very few times in the recent, um, I guess, incarnations of Guns N' Roses, they would only really play it when Izzy would make like a guest appearance. Which is, it's kind of cool because this is basically an Izzy song, this is his song. To me, it's like his signature song almost. But it needs to be played more. I wish Izzy would come back to the band so I could hear this and 14 years. Because this is such a good song that I feel not a lot of people talk about. It's, you know, it's a real, just real rocker. It's just so fun. It, the lyrics are beautiful in this song. It's basically like a love song. Some people have said it's basically a love song, not for another person, but for about drugs. And I guess if you think about it, it could go both ways. But I like to think it's about a person than drugs. Uh, the lead guitar here by Izzy is fantastic. Fantastic work on lead and slash fantastic work on rhythm. Uh, I love the melodic riffs during the chorus. Just that, listen to that specific part during the chorus. The riffs there just sound so good, so good, so good. And I just love Axe's voice in the end. It's just real, real, real powerful. Great ending. Hear this song, hear it, underrate it, make it one of your top ten because it's fantastic. Let's go into number nine. This is Sweet Child of Mine. Now this is the only song, their first and only song to go number one on the Billboard Hot 100. It's just crazy when you think about it that, you know, things like November Rain didn't go to number one, or uh, Welcome to the Jungle, or Don't Cry. This was the only one. It's kind of crazy. 
This is, I will say, this is my favorite song on the album, which is a very cliche answer to give. But not only is it my favorite song on the album, it's my favorite song of all time. Yes, again, very cliche, I know, but I, I can't get enough of this song. You can play this on a loop for 24 hours, I will not get sick of it. I'll just sing along to it every single time. I love this song, I just love it, I just think it's flawless. I don't think it has any flaws. It's perfect, it's perfect, perfect, perfect. Now this was written by Axel, of course, it was a poem for his girlfriend Erin Everly, which he married later on, which is the daughter of Don Everly of the Everly Brothers. Uh, you know, the circus intro by Rat, by Slash, is really cool, I love it. Uh, beautiful, just use of bass, and excellent throughout the bass, it's just fantastic. I love Axel's lyrics on this and his voice, it's very endearing. Uh, the guitars in here are great, the solo is just beautiful, very emotional, just exhilarating and packed, and it's just, you know, it's really slow, but you just feel all that passion going through it. I love it. And uh, I love Axel's like scream near the end, you know, after the Where Do We Go Now. And when the Where Do We Go Now, basically when they were uh, recording the demo for this, they really didn't know what to do with it. So they so Axel was just sitting there going, Where do we go? Where do we go now? And the producer was like, why don't you why don't you add that to the song? And they did you know, while they were doing the demo, so then, where do we go now? We became part of the song, which I think is really cool, I love that part. You know, everything just slows down, and the actual screams. Perfect song, and it has just a great ending, I love this thing. Let's go into... Number 10. You're crazy! Great intro, real, uh, you know, fast and crazy. Uh, I love Axel's voice on this, real raw again. The bass is great, as is everyone on this. It's just so chaotic sounding. Uh, I love Axel Wiggles. He's crazy, yeah, 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 Z. I love that. Just very strong ending. Uh, I also love the, the acoustic version on GNR Lies. Listen to that as well. I think they're both, although they're basically the same song, lyrically, they're both, they're both very different in nature. You know, one is more calm, while this one is more like chaotic. But I love both. Let's go into number 11, which is Anything Goes. This would be the oldest song on the album because this song goes back to 1981. Uh, back when uh, Izzy and Axel were in Hollywood Rose, that's when they first, the first original, let's say, draft of this song first came to be. And it basically was worked on until Guns N' Roses reworked on it. And it became this one, Anything Goes. There's basically Hollywood Rose version online, look it up. It's similar, but not exactly the same. I love the intro on this. Great intro. Axel is great throughout this whole thing. Slash uses a talk box in this throughout the whole thing and during the solo. It just, I think sounds really cool. It has a nice groove, this one. Just great groove. I love the guitars. Axel is amazing here, especially you know near the end. This is a real cool song. I love this song. Anything goes. Let's go to number 12, which is Rocket Queen. The main riff here was made by Slash and Duff prior to GNR, even prior to uh, Hollywood Rose. It was in a band they were in, it was short lived, which was Duff, Slash, and Steven. And they came up with this riff back then. So, just like Anything Goes is an old song, this one, this song isn't old, but the riff, you know, was an old riff. But I love the bass in the intro, I think it sounds great. Uh, the intro just sounds so cool and then it builds up into like this groove which I think is super cool. Uh, great just moment for like the drums and the bass combo. You hear the drums and the bass, I just think it's like a great moment in the whole, you know, in the album. It's just fantastic to hear that when you do that live is just out of this world when they play this song live. Because they make it like almost like a jam session, it just sounds so good. You know, that bridge section. And, well, you know, in the bridge section, it, the first time I heard this, it did catch me a little off guard because, as you know, in the bridge section, you basically hear uh, a woman moaning, and later I found out that, that one, that's real. Axel actually recorded himself having sex in the studio with Steven's girlfriend at the time, and when Steven found out, he was supposedly furious, just crazy. Uh, but he freaked out. 
<laughs> you, know, you know, and it's crazy that it was actually like they went and recorded that, and they had like a producer and engineer there just basically recording it, moving the microphones around while Axel had sex in the studio. This was something that Axel had in mind for the album. He wanted this on the album, so it was like premeditated. And this was gonna happen. It just happened to be with Steven's girlfriend. Oh well, Steven. Uh, <laughs> Now this song is about a friend of the band who, it was this girl who was going to start her own band and call it Rocket Queen, so this song is about her, and then the ending is basically like uh, a message for her, the Axel wrote, for anybody who listening to this song, like he'll, he'll always be there for them, or her. I think it's a great song, just overall, it just has basically many different parts to it, but just combined, it's such a great thing, and live it's even better. Because it has a whole like jam session to it. But that's that's the last song of the album. So I think this is a great, a fantastic album. Again, this was their first album. This was their debut. So right off the bat, they basically made a greatest hits album almost, just with their first album. Because like eight of these songs are played live still to this day. Eight out of twelve of these songs are played live. Like right now, on the not in this lifetime tour, they're being played. Which I think is pretty cool. Fantastic, you know, a great production on this thing. Uh, my favorite album of all time, pure just hard rock. It's dirty, sleazy, and fun. It's just so good, you know. And they would say that anybody, everybody liked this album back in then, you know, because the, the, the metalheads really like the aggression on this album, you know. But then the glam fans really like the look of Guns N' Roses, early Guns N' Roses. And, you know, the punk guy really like just the rebellion that this album was trying to convey and you know the old school guys just really liked how this song is basically blues based all the rest were really blues based you know because of Izzy so I made them you know even though the band that's blues based was Aerosmith so everybody started comparing them to like they were like a modern day Aerosmith so everybody really liked this album you know they just did so much on this album and it's, it's just fantastic now the cover I really like the cover it's a cool cover but originally Originally, the original idea for the cover that Axel had in mind was he wanted the photo of the space shuttle Challenger exploding. As you know, that exploded in uh, early '86. I believe it was January of '86, and it was on the cover of Time magazine. And Axel wanted that for the cover of the album, but the record company said no, that that would be in bad taste. And I get it, you know. It, that happened in '86. This album came out in '87, so it was probably like considered too soon to talk about it, because people basically died on that, you know. So Axel went and uh, he found a painting titled Appetite for Destruction, which they actually agreed to that. They agreed to that and it was released, but uh, the stories didn't want to stop it. They didn't like the album cover, they I guess found it offensive or something, and so they had to change up cover again. So for the third cover, the final one, it is, uh, <laughs> they went with the tattoo that Axel has. If you notice, he has the, this is the same al album cover he has on his arm, which was designed by someone, and then it was tattooed, and then he asked them, hey, you know, we're gonna put on everything, is that okay? He was like, sure. So the cover basically started off as a tattoo, and then it became the cover. It was just reworked a little bit. But it's kind of cool that this basically went through three different ideas to get to where we are. I think all three of them are good ideas, and the two that were actually official, the second and third one, really cool. And the, as you know, the, 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 the one that was, the original one that was that went to stores, that was denied, that one moved into the inner sleeve of the album, so it's still with the album. You can still find it. You can also find old copies of it. It's a pretty cool painting, Appetite for Destruction, and also basically became the name of the album, which I think it's a fantastic name, Appetite for Destruction. Basically, it just encompasses what this album is all about, what Guns N' Roses is all about at the time. And so, I just think this is one of the greatest things ever made. My favorite album of all time. I love Guns N' Roses. If you're a band of all time, I just think these five guys together were just the perfect, perfect, perfect band. Just all five of them just worked on a level that I don't think another band has been able to get that, that sort of chemistry since then, you know, and I just, that's why I feel the band really started to fall apart 
once the five were gone. Once you lost one guy, the two guys, the three, it just started, it wasn't the same. Which is why currently, modern day, the band consists of Axel Slash and Duff. And, you know, it's kind of sad because I really, I really would have loved to have seen Steven and Izzy come back. But, oh well, what can you do? I still think it's a fantastic album. 30, 30 years. Love this thing. So that's it for the album, guys. Let's move into my pick of the vid. For this pick of the vid, uh, my album's gonna be ACDC with their album Flick of the Switch. This is my favorite, my favorite 80s Brian Johnson era ACDC album. I love this album. I know everybody goes, you know, their favorite is Back in Black, but I find Back in Black overrated. I mean, I like it, I think it's really good. I just, I feel this one's really underrated. And this one has such great, like, heavy moments on it. And Brian sounds fantastic on it. I think it's just the greatest thing ever do with Brian. Back in Black, the second best. I just love this album. Check it out, listen to it. If you haven't, listen to it again. That being said, that's it for this episode. As always, in the description is a link to the whole album. If you've never heard it before, if you don't have it, you can listen to this whole album. From begin to end, on YouTube, there is a link there. But, if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more reviews. Tell me what you think on Guns N' Roses and the 30th anniversary. But that being said, remember to stay metal, stay devil, stay evil. Alright.